watch. Ceasefire talks between Israel and Hamas are at a standstill. Now Israel is setting its sights on the last Hamas stronghold in Gaza, the southern city of Rafah. It is crowded with Palestinian refugees, and Israel's planned offensive is raising tensions between President Biden and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Would invasion of Rafa, which you have urged him not to do, would that be a red line? It is a red line, but I'm never going to leave Israel. The defense of Israel is still critical, so there's no red line. He's hurting Israel more than helping Israel by making the rest of the world. It's contrary to what Israel stands for, and I think it's a big mistake. I'm telling you that we're not getting off the gas. I'm telling you that we have to take care of Israel's security in our future, and that requires eliminating the terrorist army. That's a, a, a prerequisite for victory. That victory is important not only for us, it's important for the civilized world. Okay, I don't know if you caught that from President Biden. He was asked, is there a red line? Yes. And then he said no. Uh, obviously, that's a clue, because this is becoming a serious campaign problem for Biden. Far-left Democrats have pushed people to vote uncommitted in several primary states now, and it worked. Tens of thousands of them have voted that way. And Senator Bernie Sanders is urging his progressive supporters to ease up on Biden. Can you, in good conscience, ask your supporters to vote for Mr. Biden? If you believe in democracy and involving people in the process rather than keeping people from voting, you have to vote for Biden. So you're saying so progressives need to put this aside? The fight continues to change Biden's policy in Gaza, but it, the contrast between Biden uh, and Trump is day and night. Did you see what he just did with half the country? So apparently, if you don't believe in voting for Biden, you don't believe in democracy. Well, who would he be talking about? Not just people in his own party, but anybody who doesn't vote for Biden. Wow. A New York Post op-ed argues it all comes down to politics, clearly, and Biden is trying to win re-election. In Focus Now, Fox News correspondent Benjamin Hall, author of the book Saved, A War Reporter's Mission to Make It Home. Out now on paperback, because I saw you on Instagram over the weekend with that and your children. Welcome. Um, so talk to me about what's happening on this first day of Ramadan for the Muslim communities around the world and what's happening in Gaza with Israel and Hamas war. Well, you know, Harris, a few weeks ago, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu said that the deadline for Hamas to reach a deal was the beginning of Ramadan. And if the hostages weren't released, then they were going to go ahead and they were going to move into Rafah, which is where he says a quarter of all Hamas fighters still are. So that uh, negotiation has fallen apart. There will be no current negotiation. And so what we may well be seeing over the coming days is some movement into Rafah. In the Arab world, we are going to see a, a, quite an uprising, as you do during Ramadan. A lot of people coming out to the West Bank and Jerusalem. So there may also be a lot of, sort of riots, perhaps, on the streets of Israel and Jerusalem as well. So it'll be a tricky few days ahead. And when you say tricky, uh, how does that compare with what we normally see? I mean, this, is, this has come after months and months of... Hamas leaders saying that they want to do October 7th all over again. Would they hit that nation state of Israel again? Oh, I mean, I, I think if you've listened to what Hamas said, that's absolutely what they would During like to do. During Ramadan. I think if they, they will hit it whenever they can. Um, look, they know right now that they have a quarter of their people safe. And they know that if, if Israel goes into Rafah, then the Western world, they think, will turn ever further against Israel. So they are, in a sense, they're, they're goading Israel. They're not going to release the hostages. The hostages are all they've got. Um, and they are playing with the civilian lives of people in Gaza because Hamas doesn't mind if the people of Gaza they've die. They've proven that. They're human shields to, to Hamas. Yeah. All right. Well, I do want to talk to you about your book, Saved. It's the number one New York Times bestseller and tells the story of your survival, Benjamin, after being hit by Russian bombs while covering the war in Ukraine. It happened two years ago on this Thursday. And you also recount that story in a special on Fox Nation, and we want to show everybody a clip of that. Just as we approached the first barrier, the first shell landed out, out of nowhere. About 30 yards in front of us, big explosion. Immediately, Pierre shouts very quickly, reverse, reverse, get backwards. The Ukrainians who were driving um, couldn't, couldn't get into reverse. And then out of nowhere, the second one lands. 
The special sacrifice and survival, a story from the front line, is available right now on Fox Nation. You were just telling me, first of all, have you gone back? Yeah, I was back in Ukraine in November. Uh, we interviewed Zelensky. And more than anything, I wanted to go back because I wanted to show, and it's what I want to talk about this week, I wanted to show that you can throw everything you want at journalism. You can try to stop us. And Pierre, my cameraman, Sasha, our producer, they died that day. But it won't stop journalism. It won't stop us going back. And I was back in November to show that, to show we will keep reporting because there's no way you can silence us. And so we've got to remember the lives of Pierre and Sasha, everyone who's caught up in the war, but we will not stop reporting. Anywhere in the world. And, and to protect those of you who go into the front lines, you know, it's, it's very important that Americans understand that oftentimes you're embedded with our U.S. military where we're on the ground, not in this particular case, but we're... And so the danger arises no matter where you are trying to bring home those stories of truth. That's true. But if you want to get the stories of truth, you have to be on the ground. You have to look mm -hmm. people in the eyes. You have to figure out what's happening. So many different sides of the story. And now more than ever, it's important that we listen to the journalists uh, who are out there at the moment. Amazing people we have at Fox doing that right now. Yeah, we, we've lost some journalists' lives in the Israel-Hamas war. Uh, and I just want to get your last quick thought on what's happening there. In the war? Yeah, and journalists having to tell that story. Well, I think it's tragic right now. I think that we are at a point where many people are forgetting the hostages who are being held around the world. And I was out in Israel a few weeks ago, mm. and I spoke to the family members. I spoke to released hostages and uh, they all say, just re give us back our hostages. And that's our this job. This can end. As people journalists. are forgetting that. Yeah, that's our job as journalists to keep that alive. Yeah. And, and we try to here on The Focus, and you have just reignited us again. It's always a pleasure to yeah, see you. you. God bless you and your family.